Before we get to the matter at hand, some business to tend to. You'll notice I'm rocking the Assume Jeff Jarrett position shirt. And you can get yours too from the OTR Essential Store at Pro Wrestling Tees. And I'm throwing down the gauntlet right here, right now, damn it. If you guys buy 15 of these shirts, 15 of them, by the end of September, I will go on eBay and buy the four-disc TNA set of Jeff Jarrett. I will watch all four discs, all of it, beginning to end, and then come here on OTRS Central, and I will review that bad boy, all four discs of that shit. If you want that to happen, you have the power to make that happen. Go to the OTRS Central store at Pro Wrestling Tees and buy an Assume Jeff Jarrett position t-shirt because you know deep down you want to see me have to review and more importantly watch that four disc Jeff Jarrett DVD set. Anyways, on to the real business at hand. Hashtag buy a shirt, damn it. It's one way to help hashtag save Impact Wrestling. Let's talk about Destination X. With the scuttlebutt about Alberto El Patron being stripped of the Global Force Wrestling title, you know, in the preceding days building up to this event, I was somewhat interested, somewhat intrigued, because I wanted to know what was going on. I had been looking forward to Destination X for a little while because it was going to be a quasi-live show where they were only recording it about an hour ahead of time. I thought it was going to feel different. It was going to be kind of like a big show, so I was looking forward to this night. And there were some good things and some not-so-good things. I was really surprised they started off with the Knockouts Championship. There's no setup either, really. They just dove right in. The match was really short, not particularly good, because I don't think Sienna's particularly good, and I've always thought Gail Kim was an overrated piece of crap. <laughs> Fuck Gail Kim! But this was all about Taryn Terrell and her return. Hide your wives, hide your husbands. It doesn't matter. She's beating the shit out of all of them. That was good. Even though it means Sienna's dumbass keeps the knockouts title, at least it means that Gail Kim doesn't get it. Eat the feet, bitch. You just got your ass whooped by that crazy-ass blonde again. And it was glorious. Uh, but then you get like 20 minutes of promo schmaz. First is Bruce Pritchard. And I'm thinking to myself, he's going to address the world title now. Why didn't we ease into the show and talk about the most important thing that there was to come out of this night? Why did this get buried after a very short knockouts title match? It was really strange to me. I thought the flow of the first hour of the show was not particularly well set up. Not particularly well done. And, and then when he starts talking at first, I'm saying, why the fuck would he give Lashley the title? What fucking sense does that make when you're having a shot versus shot match between Lashley and Seidel later in the night? I'm like, why would he have even bothered doing that just to sit there? And then furthermore, with what he had just done to make sure EC3 became the freaking grand champion, why in the hell wouldn't he just make him the world champion? It's, it's this type of illogical writing. It just frustrates me about this company. But lo and behold, it really wasn't about that. It was all about the return of Jim Cornette. Oh, baby. Yay. Another one of the founder's fucking fuckboys is back in the fold. I guess he lives up to the old Jake the Snake Roberts mantra of in bit wrestling, you're either a streetwalker or a call girl. And clearly, Jeff Jarrett called Jim Cornette. So he went. <laughs> oh, God. And the, the, the whole promo segment itself was kind of fucking stupid. Who, who the fuck says Cornette has the fi authority to fire anybody? And why would Bruce Pritchard take his word for it? Why would security take his word for it? This makes no goddamn sense. And don't expect me to be all types of excited about this. Why would I be excited about this out-of-touch dude who's been there, done that, and not been particularly good at it when it comes to TNA and now Global Force Wrestling... Why in the hell would I get excited about another one of Jeff Jarrett's fuckboys coming back into the fold? We don't need old people with old ideas booking and writing for this fucking company. We need younger people with fresher, newer ideas and newer concepts with maybe a hint of some old school elements. Cornette doesn't know what the fuck he's doing at this point in time, and his Ring of Honor run proved it no matter how much he wants to blame it on everybody else and give every excuse under the fucking sun. I will say, at least we got the news of the 20-man gauntlet for the Global Force title uh, coming up next week. Even the crap with Conan was short. That fucking one-kidney fuck. Fuck him. But, with that said, it was relatively short, sweet, 
to the point, at least in this case, it revolved around low key and making sure that he wasn't getting screwed, even though we kept going back to it. It was just really fucking strange. But at least he's getting to be number 20, which again, you know, Cornette is logically acknowledging that he's kind of getting the hose here because he was supposed to face him, even though I didn't even really know this was technically for a title shot. It was really mentioned in passing last week. Um, but it's whatever. So he's number 20. So at least you're selling him on the concept that he's fair. Later on in the night, I didn't really get why EC3 and Moose were walking next to each other. Almost seemed like they were kind of body-buddy with all the shit that just happened with the Grand Championship. And then Eli Drake. Oh my God, he got some fucking mic time. Eli Drake. Imagine that. He's number one, so he's starting number one. And unfortunately, unfortunately... With Moose and EC3 and Eli Drake and Loki being number 20, the dipshits on the Impact Wrestling Facebook page and people throughout Twitter have already spoiled who's winning the world title next week. That's what I've heard. Fortunately, I haven't seen who it is yet, and I'm going to try and avoid it like the plague because I don't want it to ruin next week's show for me. Because if I agree with it, I'm going to be happy. And if not, you're going to get one of those classic Schlag Daddy bitch rants that you know deep down you love or love to hate, but either way you need it. You, 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 all of you. All right, the Super X Finals. Again, to me, Destination X, in theory, being an X Division pay-per-view back in the day, um, it's really a show supposed to be built around the X Division. The fact that this didn't get a featured segment, it was just kind of buried in the middle of the show, I thought was kind of strange. And based off the way it kind of played out, I understood. You took all that time for the Pritchard and Cornette shit, this was a really short match. I had to cut time somewhere. And it was a really disappointing finish to a tournament that was really underwhelming. This tournament could have been and should have been so much more, and it just wasn't. With the weird placement on the card, how short it was, at least I could say this. At least the Global Force Wrestling roster member won. At least this company will treat its black wrestlers like they are something to be taken seriously. Not every one of them needs to have some type of stereotypical bullshit gimmick. So I wanted to call that out. Desmond Xavier beat Ishimori in a match that nobody's going to remember. But we'll see what comes out of this going forward. It was a good highlight and a good spot and good moment for Desmond Xavier. Uh, The one hour main event, the X Division title ladder match. Trevor Lee, Sanjay Dutt. Who's the real X Division champion? This was Destination X, and no no offense to Lashley and Seidel, the Super X Finals, to me, this match felt like it should have been the main event. Because honestly, it was for a title, and a pretty important title for this company, the second most important title, frankly, after the world title. Furthermore, it had the longest running storyline heading into it, even though there have been logic holes all over the place. Fundamentally, there are some interesting, compelling moments here. And to me, especially what you did in the match, this should have been the main event. The match was actually good. I was kind of getting into it. And then once Caleb Conley came out, I'm like, oh, this is fucking lame. This is stupid. Fuck this. And then all of a sudden, Maple Leaf Muscle, the Canadian destroyer himself, Petey fucking Williams, fucking came out and saved the day. And this was glorious. Who won? Some will say Sanjay Dutt retained his X Division title. And she technically did. Now he had to fight a match to sit there and go get the belt that he never lost, but was never given to him, really. It's all about Petey Williams. Is Petey Williams going to stay? Is he going to be around? Is he going to be in the picture? Or was this just a one-off? I don't know, and I don't fucking care. I got to see Petey Williams last night. I'm down with that. But what I wasn't down with was this Ohio versus Everything debut. Frankly, the name is kind of stupid. And looking at these guys outside of the mask, they seem to be kind of stupid. And who is the agent that booked this shit? Who structured this match? And why are they still employed? Why would the fucking jobbers start off dominant? Like, the whole premise of bringing in underneath enhancement no-name guys is for these other guys, the guys that you've given weeks of fucking vignettes and build-up for, to shine, to go over big, to be spotlighted. And the first thing we fucking do in this match is we have one of the OVE dudes fucking take it straight in the chops from the no-name jobbers. I know they technically gave him a name, but you get my goddamn point. Who's 
fucking piecing this shit together? How does this make any fucking sense? Weeks of hype to get to a point where you've generated absolutely zero interest in me seeing these OVE fucks ever again. And if anything, based off of the way it started from the very beginning, I was more interested in the enhancement talents than I was the fucking guys that you spent weeks pumping up and weeks sitting there and promoting their debut appearance at Destination X. How stupid can you be? It cannot be that hard to not be so damn stupid. There's a reason you bring in guys like that to do the job. They're there to be jobbers because they need nothing in the grand scheme of things. They shouldn't be getting shit in, and if they get any shit in whatsoever, it should be very minimal, lacking in any real importance and significance, and only building to the next thing that these guys are going to fucking get in. Instead, OVE wins a far too competitive match against no-namers. Why would I take them seriously? What, they're going to be a primary threat to freaking LAX? Give me a fucking break. First thing they got in the fucking GFW ring, the dude got a shit rocked by a jobber. Just dumb. Just dumb. Evidence of a clear lack of understanding of basic fundamentals of professional wrestling. Even though the business evolves and change, sometimes fundamentals are fundamentals for a reason. And you stay with fucking doing them. It's just ridiculous. And then we get to the main event. The shot versus shot match. Bobby Lashley versus Matt Seidel. I'll tell you straight up, this match was kind of sloppy. There were a couple of botchy moments in here. The flow was kind of weird. With that said, again, it's not always about the crispness of the action and the flips and the kicks and everything like that. I was into this match because throughout the match, it was easy to follow the story they were trying to tell. Lashley is dominant. He will beat the shit out of Seidel. Every once in a while, Seidel gets a little bit of a glimmer of hope. He gets that kind of hope spot, and then we're right back to reality of Lashley cleaning his fucking clock again. This was an example to me of wrestling done right. This shouldn't be a super uber uh, 50-50 competitive match. In the way the match ultimately played out, it wasn't. Lashley was dominant for a vast majority of it, as he should have been. So I was into it in that sense. But then the fucking finish happened and fuck this match. How the fuck are you going to sit there and have do nothing means nothing Matt fucking Seidel go over Bobby fucking Lashley, the goddamn destroyer. He's losing to this a fucking guy gene smiling twink. He might not go by Evan Bourne anymore, but it doesn't matter. Regardless of the name, the dude fucking sucks. And if you don't like that I said that, eat shit. Here's the fucking destroyer, Lashley. Look at these two fucks. And tell me who you think should have been winning this match. Who you think should be getting a title shot of their choosing. Give me a fucking break. Unbelievable. And the, the whole premise of this, especially now that Seidel has won and beaten the Destroyer, why in the fuck would he be bothered with a measly-ass X-Division title shot? He should be trying to get himself into that 20-man gauntlet uh, next week or a future title shot, one of the two, for the world title. Why the hell would he lower himself to the standards of the X-Division at this point? He just beat the biggest, baddest fucking dude on the block, Lashley. Why the hell would he sit there and want to wrestle a bunch of shrimps? I mean, seriously. So if he sits there and wants to cash in for an X-Division title shot, it is fucking stupid. He should be going for a world title shot. And if you are a company on national primetime television putting Matt Seidel in a world title match situation, you are retarded. Not half retard. That'll draw some money sometimes. You're going full retard. And that makes people go click, click, click. And then to top it all off, what's the point of the MMA guys choking the ref out? And then we made such a big fuss about having to remove fucking 60-year-old Bruce Pritchard from the ring like that and having him escorted out, even though Conan's dumb fucking ass, fuck K Fave, I'm going to post a picture with Cornette and Pritchard during the goddamn show because I'm a moron. We just let it happen? Like the MMA guys just jump over the fucking railing? They come out of the crowd and we just allow it to happen. So now you're sending a message to the fans that you can fuck with the wrestlers, you can fuck with the referees, and you're not going to get any consequences or repercussions? What the fuck's going on here? 
Also, we can push a bunch of people from this MMA gym that Lashley's a part of that nobody fucking knows about and from an Impact Wrestling viewing audience nobody gives a shit about. But that happened. And the last ding image of this show, the last thing we ended with, was a little tease that John Morrison, Johnny Mundo, Johnny Nitro, Johnny Impact, whatever the hell you want to call him, He's coming next week. God, I wish Tony still watched Impact Wrestling. I might try to convince him to watch next week and not say anything. Just to try and trick him into having to watch John Morrison. This will piss him the fuck off. But my honest opinion is, is Johnny Morrison, Johnny Impact, whatever the hell, Johnny Mundo you want to call him, this company could use an infusion of name-recognizable talent. And he brings some of that. He brings a fresh face. He's a good fit to me because he can work in all three divisions, X Division, Grand Champion, Global Championship. You know, for that company, I think he makes a tremendous deal of sense. And while I'm not the hugest fan of his in the world, I don't see where this is a bad thing. And I like how they closed out the show with this because they're giving you several things. I will say this. Based off of Destination X, if nothing else, they gave you, in my opinion, several reasons to tune in next week. What happens now that Jim Cornette is apparently in charge and are we going to get some lame-ass power struggle angle here? What happens next for Bobby Lashley? What happens next for Seidel? What happens with the world title in that 20-man gauntlet next week? And what happens with Johnny Impact? Coming to Impact Wrestling and Global Force Wrestling next week. So, there were good things on the show. And even though it wasn't great, and there were still things that frustrated me. If nothing else, it gave me several things to look for, to anticipate on next week's show. And if anything, I would say that is a reason to classify Destination X as a small success. At least from my viewing experience point. But you can let me know if you watched Destination X, what you thought of it in the comments section below. Remember, go to the OTR Central Store at Pro Wrestling Tees and hashtag buy a shirt. You buy 15 of these bitches, guys. 15 of them by the end of September. And I will buy that four-disc set of Jeff Jarrett's. I will watch it and I will review it for your viewing pleasure. And remember, this is OTR Central. Where, you know, sometimes it's important to remember... I watch this shit so you don't have to, but most importantly of all, this is not the wrestling show you want, just the wrestling show you need.